Praise God. Praise God. Give him glory. Give him glory. This is Apostle Deanna Dixon. I pray that you are having a blessed day in the Lord. Come on, somebody. Let's give him praise. Today is day three of the 14-day um, full liquid fast. Praise God. Praise God. He is good. Give him glory. Give him glory. I just want to go ahead and start with prayer. Praise God. I pray that you are strengthened throughout this fast. I pray that you acquire the wisdom, the knowledge, the discernment that God wants you to be. Come on somebody. Hallelujah. So let me go ahead, stretch your hands if you can, or just pray where you at. Praise God. Praise God. Oh, Father God, gracious God. Oh, hallelujah. We just thank you, God. We thank you for everything, the good and the bad, Father God. For they all work together for those that love the Lord and are called according to his purpose. Oh, Father God, as we go throughout the day, keep us, Father God. Oh, Father God, in the name of Jesus, may we commune with you on a daily basis, Father God. We pray for our family, our friends, and ourselves, Father God. Lift us up, Father God. Give us wisdom and discernment, Father God. Strengthen our minds, our hearts, our bodies, our souls. And our and our my our spirits, Father God, so that we, Father God, can serve you holy and just, Father God, in the name of Jesus. Oh, Father God, you said that no weapon formed against us shall prosper. It shall form, but it shall not prosper. We know that we have an enemy, but Father God, we know that we have a meditator. Jesus Christ, Father God, that's on the throne, sitting by you, Father God, on the right hand, Father God, in the name of Jesus. Oh, God, we just thank you, God. We thank you for what you're going to do, what you have done. Father God, we thank you for preparing us, Father God. We thank you for the soldiers of the end time army, Father God. Oh, Father God, let us be who you have called us to be, ordained us to be, sustained us to be in Jesus Christ of Nazareth name. Oh, Father God, I plead the blood of Jesus over our minds, our souls, and our bodies. Oh, Father God, have your way in Jesus' name. Let us all say on one accord, amen, amen, amen. I want you to know, and I'm going to do throughout this fast, and I pray that you understand, the things that I am giving you on this fast is not just for a fast, and it's for a life. Come on, somebody, hallelujah. You notice I never get tripped off on prayer. You notice how... Yesterday and today, it's like I got tripped up. I don't do that because I have a prayer life. But I realized that one thing I realized yesterday, I realized last night, oh, shoes, I think I realized before the fast even started. The enemy hates fasting for he knows that you are feeding your spirit and you hear clearly from God. And, and to be honest with you, you know, I, I just got to go here. God is getting us back to old school fasting. That's without nothing. The body of Christ, the reason why I think that he does liquid fasts and Daniel fasts for right now, he's preparing us for the major battle. You won't last if you don't fast. And I had to learn that the hard way. Let's be honest. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. I know we go through trials, tests. And for women, I'm going to say some intricate things throughout this fast. All right. For women... Because let's say you're not sinning, per drinking, fornicating, doing whatever. So women go into emotional eating, but also men. God is trying to get us to a level where we're so strong till we pray it through. We walk it through and we, we conquer whatever that sin is. Come on, somebody, because we all got sin. Oh, come on, somebody, because we all fall short of the glory of God. Come on, somebody, hallelujah. I said all that to say prayer is the key. Prayer is your weapon. Stay prayed up. I don't care if you're going to the restroom. I don't care if you're on your job. I don't care if you're doing whatever you're doing throughout the day. This should be a lifestyle. When you make it a lifestyle, you, I'm telling you, you stepping on the devil's neck every time he tries to perpetrate something. Every time, every assignment, every test, every trial, oh, he's going to try you. I promise you because it seems as though, and I think that's why the anointed ones, and I'm sorry I have to say it like that, go through so much. When I started, before I started this fast, it's been boom, 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 boom. I'm not going to speak it because I also want you to be under, be aware of this too. Doing this fast or, and just in life. Proverbs 18, 21, death and life are in the power of the tongue and those that love it should eat the fruit thereof. Please be mindful of what you speak. Doing this fast and in your life Because what you speak you shall have Oh come on somebody hallelujah And I'm talking about if you're going through a negative situation Try not to speak on it Now yes we got a vent that's, that, that's, that's real Come on some of us really need to vent Y'all know come on somebody hallelujah But be mindful Because remember the lesson yesterday You are a spirit so what you speak It should become He spoke come on somebody in Genesis Oh hallelujah he said let there be light And there was light hallelujah and remember, you are made in his image. 
Praise God, praise God. So be mindful, be careful. So doing this fast, pray, pray, pray. And if you're not on the fast, just pray, pray always. Too many things are happening because we're not prayed up. And angels, all of us have angels, in case you don't know. And yes, there are different type of angels that are assigned to different type of people. Um, some people have worn angels. Some people have protection angels. It doesn't matter. We all have angels. And I actually see them, and I'm not kidding. I've been seeing angels since I was 27 as well. Once your spiritual eyes are open, they are open. You see everything. And it, it when I first saw an angel, it was the day my mother died on May 9th. Mm -hmm. And I'll go ahead and tell you that short story because, like I said, I tell you these things to encourage you and to let you know it can happen to you too. Not to look at me like, oh, she's just bragging about that. That's not my spirit. So, um, mother had died, and I was sitting on the sofa, and I had a, um, I was a teen, I was a youth minister in Manny, Louisiana. And long story short, I was just sitting there in awe because I lost my best friend. The only one, you know, like I, most of you know my past because I've told you on here. I was a, I was a hell of a race. I ain't even going front. I gave mother so much trouble until, you know, when she died, I realized, man, what have I done? Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm encouraging somebody. And maybe y'all can show these teenagers because they don't understand what they have until it's gone. You, you ain't ready for me. So I'm sitting there and I'm on a second story floor. And... Out of your peripheral vision, you know, you can see things. So I saw something. I said, okay, I'm tripping. You know, and I wasn't drinking anything or a high or, or anything. I was sitting there, and I promise you, just as the Lord is the Lord. I sat there, and I saw, it's, and angels are big. So I don't know why they do draw these little short, fat angels, um, baby angels, you know. I mean, I'm not saying they don't have baby angels, but angels are big as buses. You know, metro buses, the ones that pick up people, whatever, martyr buses. And so that angel looked up, and it really had a scepter. And I looked, and I was like, I didn't know what to think, to be honest with you. You know, I didn't know. And so I had someone with me. They were talking with me, right? And so I said, okay, if they see it, then I know I'm not tripping. So I, I, I didn't even say anything. I just kind of like looked crazy. But when they did this, and they looked in the same direction, I know that they had saw it, that angel too. So then we just both kind of like dumbfounded. You want to get something to eat? I said, yeah, because <laughs> we didn't want to talk about anything because I was still trying to wrap my mind over what I saw. I'm telling you, it is a beautiful thing, but also it makes you accountable. Once your spiritual eyes and your spiritual ears are open, you are more accountable. Oh, y'all ain't ready for me. I can't do what most people do. I can't go where most people go. I can't say what most people say. And sometimes, yes, I am like, wow, God, just, just, just can I give a little leeway? Can I tell him how I really feel? Can, can I do what I really want? Oh, y'all ain't ready for me. Hallelujah. That's when he's Lord over your life. Hallelujah. Oh, come on, somebody. So let me start the um, short Bible study. So basically, if you heard, I say stranger danger. And God gave me this yesterday. It's so funny. God really gives you everything you need. And I said, God, what do you mean? He said, you know how they teach them if somebody is getting abducted, um, you know, the little kids. They say, stranger, danger. I'm going to say it again. Stranger, danger. I'm going to say it again. Stranger, danger. Isn't that true? God has been telling you, stranger, danger. And y'all act like y'all don't even hear him. And then when you go through that thing, go through that test, go through that trial. Well, you crying. Just be real. You crying because you were disobedient. I'm telling you what God is saying. Get your spirit so full that when you hear stranger danger, you know what? I'm not going that way. I'm not going to do this. I'm not going to allow this because a lot of people are falling because of the temptations, God said. The temptations and the lust thereof. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. I, I know we need things, but I'm going to be honest with you. The body of Christ then got so fragile to we will do. And when I say we, because God look at us as the whole body of Christ. I'm not putting myself in that category that I do that but he looks at us as a whole not as just servant Deanna or servant you whoever you are come on somebody hallelujah so when that test or trial come which mostly is money a man a woman you will be tempted with what you want the most come on somebody and let me tell you something ladies and men the counterfeit always comes before the blessing I mean it'll look like it It'll smell like it It'll talk like it It'll walk like it And it ain't even real Come on somebody Hallelujah Alright So Let me go ahead to my notes First of all Let me go to scripture And a lot of you ask Well how do you walk in the spirit How do you get in the spirit It's a relationship There is no ABCs To how you get in the spirit It's a relationship with God You know Just 
I, I love to be prostrate before the Lord. You lay something on the floor or, you know, just lay on the floor. And basically, you lay there and you pray. You pray. But then also, there's a twofold to praying. You listen. Oh, you can't just be, well, God, you know, I need my bills paid. God, you know, I need a husband. I need a wife. God, my body hurt. God, my mind. Whatever the case may be, after you pray, listen. Listen for instructions. A lot of people say, I don't hear God. Yes, you do. Yes, you do. Yes, you do. But you got to be still. You got to calm the noise. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. You got to calm the noise. There's too much noise in our lives. I'm talking about from Facebook. I I, I get on here, but I get off. I'm going to be honest with you. I do what I got to do, and I get off. I used to be on here all the time. I don't let it take up my time because I understand. Let me tell you something. You don't know something that is a distraction until it's finished distracting you. I'm going to say that again. You don't know a distraction until it finished distracting you, and then you're like, Excuse me. Oh, my God. You know, so what I'm saying is that that's how you get into the body. That's how you get into the spirit. And then worship music. And I'm going to tell you now, the body of Christ have gotten so lazy, even in church. Come on, somebody. It's a routine, right? It's protocol. As a matter of fact, so much protocol to the Holy Spirit ain't even invited. Oh, come on, somebody. Hallelujah. A, B, C, D. I, I, I've been to most churches. I see the same thing over and over. And I'm going somewhere. I'm answering the question in a whole most pastors, preachers, bishops, whatever. Okay, we got to have to have the announcements at 9. We got to be out by 10. Fast food churches. And y'all doing it for more money. Don't play with me this morning because I'm on one. Hallelujah. This fast got me on one. Open wide. Going to tell the whole truth. You can get mad if you want to. You need to go to repent somewhere. Money, hunger, greedy. Spirit, because that's what that is. Do you not understand that God will charge you because of the fact that you are not feeding his people because guess what? You are feeding off his people instead of feeding into his people. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. So that's why the Holy Spirit don't even have time to work. So that's why, oh, I'm about to go here. I'm about to go here. Hallelujah to his name. Okay, so for those that don't know, because I also get questions, and I'm coming back around. I'm answering the whole thing in the whole, but I'm being led by the Spirit. So if I'm switching, don't even worry. Just follow me, honey. Um, Let me tell you something. That's why God took me out of the church in 2015. I had been under leaders my whole life. I've got ordained. I, 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 I'm a reverend. Um, just to be honest with you, they're preparing work for a doctorate. I don't care about all that stuff. And what I mean by that is I'm still a servant. I, I have my chaplain license. A lot of people don't understand who I am. Baby, I've worked for this 23 years. Now, in 2015, when God took me out of the church, I was upset. I said, God, I've been in church all my life. What are you doing? He said, Deanna... I'm calling my people out of her. Y'all ain't ready. He said that it's become a Babylonian church. He said, so I'm calling my people, the remnant out. Because you got to go back in and say, you are the order. You're going to have to say, thus said the Lord. Y'all ain't ready for me. And God is preparing some of you. And I know you're scared, but you better get ready. Oh, come on, somebody, because they're going to reject you. Oh, hallelujah. Because, because guess what? They think it's their church. The pastors of today think it's their church. They're treating it as if it is a business. And it's a ministry. And by the way, pastor, preacher, teacher, that's God's people. That's not your people. You are supposed to be an overseer. You're supposed to be taking care of business. His people and you're not. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. I feel the power of the Holy Ghost. So just hang with me. Because wherever he go, I got to follow. So, yes, I ain't removed. So when he took me out. I really didn't know how to function. I was like, okay, because we had been trained and being rushed, you know, 8 o'clock, 9 o'clock, fast food churches. He said, I'm going to take you on another level, Deanna. And can I tell you something? And I'm just being honest. I have gotten more anointed. I've gotten closer to God. Y'all see the change? Come on, don't, don't trip. Y'all know it. Y'all know it and know you see it and I feel it. I thought you had to be in church. He said, you are the church. And I'm not knocking every church, but most churches, y'all know y'all tainted, so don't even play with me. So then I began to say, well, how am I going to do this? He said, I'm going to show you how to walk in the spirit, how to lay before me in the spirit, how to travail in the spirit, how to prevail in the spirit. I'm going to teach you, Deanna. And, and, and Deanna, you're going to be alone. Pruning process. I didn't like that because with church, you know, you got your little friends and, and you, you, you're greeting. Praise the Lord. How you doing? Highly favored and blessed like you. you. You know the little cliches we got and all that stuff. And when really you tell the truth, you know what? Well, I ain't feeling it today. All right? I don't want to be in here. As a matter of fact, I don't feel like reading no word. I don't feel like hearing no word. I really don't want no word. I need Jesus to move. Hallelujah. But, 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 but church folks can't hear that. But the truth is, 
Sometimes you hurting so bad, you don't want to hear nothing. I got to see something. God, are you there? Have you left me? Have you forsaken me? Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. So let's get back to walking and being in the spirit. I had to form this relationship with God one-on-one, face-to-face, face-to-face, to when I see God. He said, Deanna, I want to be Lord over your life. That means you got to give it to me every area of your life. Ooh, I just said something because some of you haven't, you still, you still trying to be in control. There is a surrenderance that comes with knowing and walking in the spirit of God. God, you can take my life. Wherever you want me to go, I'll go. Whatever you want me to do. And people will mock you for it. People will say, well, that, that don't sound like God. Oh, I'm about to go hear testimony. Sometimes I felt like a vagabond. Oh, I'm about to go here because some of you know my story. I have lived here, there, everywhere. With other people. And I'm saying, God, really? This how I got to do it? Yes, I'm teaching you something. The, the, man, the, uh, the man, he says, Jesus had nowhere to lay his head. I'm going somewhere with this. I went through a lot of stuff. I did not understand and did not appreciate, truth be told. But now I am more humble and I understand what he was doing. He was teaching me. You see, Deanna, if you can serve me with nothing. I know when you get something, you ain't going to lose your mind. Ooh, y'all ain't ready for me. I know if you can serve me in somebody else's house and they're mistreating you, I'm going here with it. Or or putting their mouth on you or telling everybody, yeah, 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 yeah. Y'all know the gossip. But if you can go through everything that I allow you to go through, he's talking to you too, by the way. Then I know when I get you in the place of destiny, of purpose, of your calling, then I know you're going to be able to stand. Hallelujah. And you're not going to fall. You see, let me tell you why a lot of people are falling these days. They didn't go through that process. I ain't going to do it like this. Because as soon as you start going through that process, you start reverting back to worldly ways. But if you want to walk in the spirit, talk in the spirit, move in the spirit, have a heavy anointing. God, I'm going to do it your way, even though I don't understand it. They're talking about me, God. God, I look bad. Ooh, ain't God made you look bad sometimes? And yeah, I'm talking uh, Ebonics. But don't he have you looking like a complete fool? Well, people don't even think that you were anointed and appointed. Hallelujah to his name. Well, people put their mouth on you. Well, they ain't got nothing. How they anointed? How God with them? Mm, I done been through some stuff. Now, some of you are going through the same thing. That's why I'm talking about it this morning because I feel the spirit of the Holy Ghost leading me in this direction. I have a whole thing written, but I got to go where God wants me to go. Be encouraged, beloved, because this is not the end of your story. And I got tears in my eyes because I know how you feel. I know how it hurts. I know how you just want to give up. I know how you want to turn back on your turn your back on God, but don't you dare give up. Because there's an appointed time that God going to say, enough, devil. Hallelujah. I rebuke you. And that's when everything going to fall in place. But you still going to have some tests and trials and tribulations because each level different devil. But we're talking about walking in the spirit, talking in the spirit. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. So that's when you become and you form this intimate relationship with God. You have you ever been in love? Oh, come on, somebody. Have you ever been in love? Because I ain't talking about with no human. You have to fall in love with God to become intimate with God. On a level to where I love you, God. Yeah, it hurts. I don't understand it. But I love you and I trust you. Do you trust God for real? No, no, don't play. Do you really trust him? Because when you trust him, you surrender. You stop doing things your way and you do what God says. Now, I'm not going to say you're going to be perfect. But you're going to be striving towards that perfection. God, God, I repent. Okay, I'll do it your way. Because you ever notice that if you don't do what God said, you come right back around. Hallelujah. We're talking about walking and talking in the spirit. So then that intimacy is formed. And y'all, you learn how to trust God. You learn how to walk with God. You learn how to talk with God. You learn to obey God. That's it right there. And I mean, you start spending time, you make time. No, I'm not taking calls today for at least half an hour or an hour. No, I'm not going here with you. No, let me tell you something. And when you stop doing those things that God told you not to do, drinking, smoking, fornicating, lying, stealing, cheating on your taxes, whatever the case may be, that's when you're really in a total of surrenderance. So then now, when you get up in the morning, you start worshiping him. 
And and the body have gotten lazy because even in church, that's where I was going, that point about five minutes ago, where protocol to, okay, now we want y'all to worship. Okay, now we want y'all to stop worshiping. Honey, when you learn how to worship God, you'll start crying for no reason. You'll feel the power of God like I do right now for no reason. You don't need to be primped and primed because I'm a servant because of how you kept me. Oh, I'm going somewhere. Hallelujah. And a lot of you don't even understand that worship from the outside is supposed to be worshiped from the inside. Oh, come on, somebody. Hallelujah. What am I saying? You got to learn how. There's a song I want you to remember. And I want somebody to write in the comments for me. It's called Shekinah Glory Before the Throne. It say, Before the throne, I want to be with you. In your presence, oh, your presence, Lord. I gotta be, gotta be, gotta be, gotta be in your presence, Lord. Mm -hmm. I gotta be in your presence, oh, Lord, keep me. That song will take you to a dimension you have never been before. That's how you walk in the spirit, my brothers and sisters. Complete, total surrenderance. And your worship is your worship. Even in church, yeah, they, they be looking at people crazy if you, if you catch the Holy Ghost for real. Because truth be talking, I tell y'all a secret. Half of y'all ain't caught the Holy Ghost. <laughs> have you ever caught the Holy Ghost? Now, don't play with me. I'm not talking about no emotional ghost. We there too many of those. <laughs> when you catch the Holy Ghost, you are not in control and you ain't going to hurt yourself. All right? Have you ever been laid hands on for real to where your legs become jelly and you can't even get up? That's what's missing in the body of Christ. Stranger, danger. The enemy has entered in our households. Our lives, our churches, God said. And we have not said stranger danger. Even if it's a person, a one like a witch. How is it, and I'm going here. How is it that a warlock and a witch can operate in your churches? The devil is a lie. That means somebody's not anointed. Oh, come on, somebody, hallelujah. Because they can't stand to be around me. They get a little nervous. Can, can I tell you another story? And they're all true, by the way. I went to, and I'm going there. I'm, I'm naming names. Oh, yes. When the when God gave me the, okay, I'm a, I'm, yeah. I went to Bishop Noel Jones Church. <laughs> Whoo, you're going to have to go yourself and, and see the full manifestation. I didn't know what was going on. I didn't. So, they had a whole section. Oh, I got to go here. I can't even try to. I was trying to clean it up. I can't even clean it up. Okay, so they had a whole section of homosexuals. They look like they run the church. And I was like, I was just, you know, because I really didn't want to go. My spirit was like, but I went because one of my friends wanted to go. I said, okay, I'm I'm in here now. So I, I, I had my armor bear with me. I said, get my oral. Y'all y'all know I put all the oral on me. So long story short, get I'm getting to a point here. I'm not trying to bash me, but I'm getting to a point. Then one of them went and started with praise and worship. And I heard something God said, you see, there's holy mixed with unholy. But that's not what I want to tell you. People begin to worship and stand. Now, remember, it's mixed holy, unholy with holy. They had this one woman, and she kept staring at me and just, and she was dancing in a provocative manner. And I knew that wasn't God. And you know I'm crazy, right? And you know I had my aura. But crazy in a good way. Let me say that. See, as long as you know you're crazy, you're okay. But when you don't know, that's what you'd be afraid of. And so, and, and not even that, because we fear nothing. So anyway, she kept looking at me as, I don't know if she was bicycle. I don't know, okay? I don't know what was going on. So I got tired, and I said, come here. She wouldn't come. I said, come on. Come on. Yeah, I sure did. I said, come on. Because I was going to lay hands on her and cast that thing out. I don't play. I don't play. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. So, what I'm saying Stranger danger. The church have not called out stranger danger. Y'all got liars in the pulpit. Y'all got adulterers in the pulpit. Y'all got fornicators in the pulpit. Y'all got homosexuality in the pulpit. Stranger danger. Elders, God gonna get you. You have not said anything. And some of you that are in leadership, you know you need to step down. 
and just repent. Get yourself right. Sit somewhere. Go sit somewhere. Learn to love God all over again. Repent. Because we all fall short of the glory of God. Stranger danger. Let me continue this. Okay, so about the fast, let me go ahead and tell you what God said. These scriptures. All right, so I'm in Ezekiel 33, 8. And he says, and I always get the King James Version. Because the rest of them, they didn't, they didn't dilute it. When I say unto the wicked, O wicked man, thou shalt surely die if thou doest not speak to warn the wicked from his way. That wicked man shall die in his iniquity, but his blood will I require at thine hand. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on. I got to read this again because I must be tripping. I'm tripping or somebody tripping. Hold on. Ezekiel 33, 8 says, this is the word of God. It says, when I say unto the wicked, O wicked man, thou shalt surely die if thou do not speak to warn the wicked from his way, that wicked man shall die. So wait a minute, he's going to die in his iniquity, but his blood will I require at thy hand. So you mean to tell me if I don't tell my brother and my sister, that they are in sin or they are in error. That the blood of my brother and sister will be on me. Y'all ain't ready. That's what's happening to the churches. The blood is on your hand. You are supposed to tell your brother and sister. And I'm not saying in an ugly, arrogant, prideful way. Uh, not even in a, a little um, doting way to where you, you, you kind of like chastising, chastising them yourself. But you're supposed to say, my brother, my sister, God is not pleased. Or thus said the Lord. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. You have not said stranger danger, said the Lord. Okay, let me go ahead and God want me to actually read something else here. Okay. Praise God. Praise God. I know it's been tight, but it's going to be right, right? So God says, fasting for humility. You've got to ask God to keep you humble. So he said, Psalm 35, 13, 14. I wore sackcloth. I afflicted myself with fasting. Because I ain't going to lie. Fasting is hard. It doesn't matter. Especially if you like to eat. Don't play with me now. I ain't the only one, right? Hello. I prayed with hate, bowed on my chest. I went as though I grieved for my friend or my brother. As one who laments his mother, I bowed down in mourning. I wore sackcloth. Do you understand? What he's saying is that there are a few things that we can do to make us see our need for God, then to fast. During times of fasting, we see how much we depend on God for everything, for sustenance. We cannot survive without God not for very long because he gives us all things to enjoy first Timothy six seventeen, James 1 17 David said it was actually good that he had been afflicted because every time if you read the word afflicted in the Bible it speaks of fasting I just said something the word David used for afflict is the Hebrew word for anah and it means to afflict, oppress, humble, and be bowed down. And this is exactly what fasting does. It humbles you. Maybe you have heard the saying, the word of God comforts the afflicted and afflicts the, uncomfortable, afflicts the comfortable. Y'all hear what I just said? Let me read that again. The word of God comforts the afflicted and afflicts the comfortable. This is true. And God will humble us every time we fast. So when you're fasting, it's not just about, guess what? I'm going on a fast. Ask the Lord, Lord, what is there inside of me? What am I doing, God? Help me, God. And I suggest that you get you a notebook or even a journal. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. So let me continue this Bible study here. Okay. So God was saying that the church stopped being our brothers and sisters keeper. We, we, we rather, and we, and because God look at Israel, people are talking about people like a dog. I started to go to that brother and sister. The Bible says, if you have out with your brother and sister, or brother or sister, or anyone, go to them. Most of you are putting it on Facebook. You're telling everybody else, but you're not telling that brother and that sister. And I just read to you. If they die and they sin, the blood is on your hand. I don't know about you, but I, 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 uh, -uh. I, I can't take that. I, I, I am not gonna allow, not uh, my, myself, not to say anything when God has given me. Scripture and commandment. Come on, somebody. He said, because if you love me, you keep my commandments. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. I just said something. All right. 
Now, even if they stop speaking to you, ooh, let's talk about this. That's why most of you will not tell your brother and sister what thus said the Lord or if they're in error. You're scared they're going to stop speaking to you. You're scared they're going to stop being your friend. You're scared if, if they got money, they're going to stop helping you. Oh, I said it. Did I not say it? Oh, come on, somebody, hallelujah. Especially if they're famous or something like that. Can I tell you something? You should be worried about their soul, said the Lord. Come on, somebody, hallelujah. Worry we're about their soul, God says. Hallelujah. Oh, I love what God said about this one, you guys. He said, clicks are tricks. You have to keep performing tricks to stay in clicks. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Let me tell you something right now. The body of Christ. We need to go back to the old, old way. Not no, you see this technology? This technology then got people out, just lazy. They made us lazy. I'm going to be real with you. When I say us, the whole body of Christ. Carry your Bible to church. Read your Bible. Come on, somebody. Get in a corner for 30 or 40 minutes, 15 minutes. That's what I challenge you doing this fast. Get in your word. Come on, somebody. Read your word. Work your word. Speak your word. Talk your word. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. And humble yourself in this time. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. This stuff is real. This stuff is real. This stuff is real because we all going through something. Aren't you sick and tired of being sick and tired? Don't play with me. You can't all, can't everybody be famous. So come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Can't everybody have a million dollars? Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Can you just want what God have assigned you? Everybody on this earth have an assignment. And I'm going to tell you something because I said it in my class and, and I'm telling you, I got some deep stuff to share with you. One thing when I got this calling on my life. God said, Deanna, I will share things with you that I have never told another human being. I thought that was just exciting. And I'm not trying to boast again. I'm just telling you. And I'm, got, I'm, get, I'm getting ready to break something down. I'm telling you, it's, it's going to blow your mind and you're going to know it's real. Okay, so I said, God, how did we come on earth? I'm going to go to the scripture. I'll break it down with the scripture first so you can completely understand what I'm saying when I get ready to say it. Okay. Just one moment, please. I'm going in Jeremiah. Okay. And it's going to be deep. I promise you. Okay. So. All right. Okay. I want to go to the King James Version. Hold on. All right. I'm on Jeremiah 1 5, and I knew some of you knew that. Before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. And before thou camest forth out of the room, I sanctified thee and I ordained thee as a prophet. Now I'm getting ready to just break some things down for you. Notice he said, Before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. You know when a baby is born, what happens? They have to cut the umbilical cord. You know why? Because you are transcending from spirit into human. So there's a cut. Come on, somebody, hallelujah. Now, let me tell you how you got here. I know this is going to sound crazy, but go ahead and play the video backwards okay so me and my nosy self again right i ask god i say god how did we get here in heaven is heaven is real big now i told you i haven't been in heaven before right did i tell you that i told the class i'm not sure if i told it on here yes i never went to hell but i did go to heaven i will tell you that probably right after this but i have to stay focused on this part so i asked god i said god how did we come here he said Dana, you were all spirits in heaven with me now heaven is big it's like a big courtroom in there. Oh, y'all don't hear me. It's like a big courtroom. There's lots of angels and they have pins and they have pins with those feathers. You know what I'm saying? The old time pins. And so picture this. We're all in a stadium. And so I'm going to use myself for example. Okay. So, um, I need someone. My, my father name is Wesley and my mother name is Carolyn. I need someone to go and be Carolyn, Wesley and Carolyn daughter. And at a certain time, Deanna, now here's what's going to happen, Deanna. I need you. Well, actually, my name wasn't even Deanna. We were, we were, remember, come on somebody, because we have a spiritual name that no one knows. And can I tell you something? I know my name and I could never tell anybody, but I would tell you it's pretty. I have never told anybody on this earth. And when God tells you certain things, you cannot tell. You hear me? And so you have to, and that's another thing. I don't know why God's making me say that before I finish this story. Y'all talk too much. There is um, confidentiality. When it comes to the body, body of Christ, don't be telling people business. Y'all talking too much, and that's therefore people don't don't trust people in the church. We got to go back to keeping secrets. You have to be your brother and sister's keeper for real. Stop telling people business. I don't know why God made me interject that. So let me go back to the story. So God says, okay. So I want you to go to go down to earth, and at a certain time in your life, go ahead, do what you got to do, live your life. Understand, honor thy father and thy mother. But at a certain time, 
You're going to remember me. I get excited about this thing. He said, but at some time in your life, you're going to remember me, Deanna. So I told you. I didn't did everything under the sun. Oh, Lord, what I didn't do. But at 27 years old, you know how the prodigal son came to himself? I said, wait a minute. I remember walking the street all night long. I said, I'm supposed to be doing something. I was crying. I said, something wrong. And I had $6,000 in my pocket. I'm just to let you know how money don't make you happy. I said, something wrong. And I tell you, the transformation began. I mean, I started remembering just like God said. I said, wait a minute. And this is who you see today. The same thing for you, my brother and sister. Oh, I'm about to preach this thing for real. I feel the power of God. You didn't did what you want to do all your whole life. But wasn't it that one moment that you came to yourself and you said, wait a minute, wait a minute, not like this. Hallelujah to his name. I mean, you remembered who you were. Hallelujah. I, I'm going deeper. Have you ever saw somebody and you say, oh, they look familiar. But you know in your, in your human life, you don't know them. But you know you know them. I'm telling you, it has happened to me, I don't know, several times. I don't know what I know that person. But I didn't. In my human, I didn't know them. But my spirit, I know that person. Oh, 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 they, now, they like to call it deja vu for when I'm getting ready to bring up. But I don't like that word because it sounds funny or something. Have you ever seen a place or been to a place? You say, I've been here before. Y'all ain't ready for me. Y'all ain't ready for me. Let me tell you something. You are truly a spirit being, having a human experience. So do you understand that your spirit dominates your flesh? As a matter of fact, let's go here. Don't your spirit know things before your flesh. You will feel it. You say, I feel that thing. I feel that's because you are spirit first. Oh, come on, somebody. So whatever you feed the most, that's what you become. Whatever you feed the most, that's what your authority is. If you're feeding your flesh, oh, come on, somebody. You already know that's a mess. But if you are feeding your spirit with the word day and night, and I'm talking about listening to pure people preach. Oh, I just said something too. You have to be mindful. Stranger danger. I don't let anybody just in my gates. The eye gate, the mouth gate, any, anywhere there's an opening, there's a gate. Remember I told you yesterday, the enemy just looking, trying to get in. Well, I'm going to get in. Well, I'm going to get in. And trust me, he's been doing this stuff for thousands of years. He know how to invoke a spirit. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. I don't let anybody just, and I'm not saying I'm all that in a bag of chips. You got to be anointed because guess what? This is my lifeline to God. So I can't just let anybody talk to me. Oh, come on. Somebody pray with me. Speak to me. Talk to me. Are you crazy? This is all I got. This is all you have. What did I tell you yesterday? Your most precious, precious asset is your body. Because your body house, your spirit, your body house, the Holy Spirit. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. And, and, and let's talk about this. I want to ask you something. When you sin, does the Holy Spirit stay in? The Holy Spirit cannot dwell in an unclean temple. That's how some people of God actually get cut off of this earth. You didn't know. The Holy Spirit cannot dwell in an unclean temple. So when you sin, he leaves. Oh, y'all ain't ready for me, huh? I used to smoke cigarettes, all right? And, and sneak smoke, all right? Yeah, I say sneak smoke. So one day, I'm out. I think it's about 6.30 in the morning trying to catch the bus or something. This was years ago. I don't even remember when. And I'm telling you, this really happened. I'll tell you these stories so y'all could be encouraged and how God will intervene spiritually. And so I'm smoking because ain't nobody holler up, right? And I'm telling you, this man appeared out of nowhere. And he looked like he, he was from Pakistan or something. I know it sounds weird. And he said, you know you shouldn't be smoking. Man, I got so scared. I, I put the cigarette and I looked. The man disappeared. I said, okay. So then I start, I say, okay, God, did you really just send an angel to tell me? I said, you could have just told me, said, Deanna, anything that enters your body illegally, oh, I, we talked about that yesterday, is sin. And it would make the Holy Spirit disappear. Y'all Yo, ain't ready for me. Y'all ain't ready for me. That's why the churches don't have the presence of God. Come on, somebody. The Holy Spirit wants to come. The Holy Spirit needs time to work. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. You wonder why we don't have the spirit because we haven't take time. Everything. Let me tell you what the enemy does. The enemy is smart. Yes, he is. But he doesn't have glory like God. Come on, somebody. He didn't came in. Everything rush. Rush, 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 rush. Come on, somebody. Microwave generation. If it ain't rush, I got to go. I got to go. Some of you don't want to stand in line too long. You start cussing, fussing. Oh, come on, somebody. Fast food churches. Fast food. Come on, somebody. Fast food word. Come on, somebody. Hit and quit it. When it is real it takes time and, and people let me tell you something grandma used to say a long time ago 
anything really worth having, getting, keeping, takes time. Be mindful. Be mindful of what you do. Be mindful of what you listen to. Be mindful. Hallelujah. This stuff is real. People don't want to take time no more. Guard your anointing. Guard your gates. Guard your spirit. Because that's all you got. Hallelujah to his name. So throughout the, this day, pray. Pray earnestly. And, and I, want you, I, I want to challenge you to make it a lifestyle. Make this a lifestyle. Make prayer a lifestyle. If, if the, everything's not going to be, I'm going to tell you right now, everything's not going to be exciting. You know, like, tell the truth. We, we, love, we like excitement. Boom, 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 boom. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Woo, woo. Emotional. Sometimes, just like this, it would be preaching and teaching and reaching. I had to learn that because, you know, children of God are special. As a matter of fact, he says we are peculiar people. I know why. You know, we like excitement. We like, but I had to learn to be quiet. Sometimes sit still, listen, pay attention. That's how you hear God. And to be honest with you, moving too fast, you'll miss something. Oh, y'all ain't ready for me. You ain't ready for me. Hallelujah to his name. So come on, somebody. Hallelujah. And I'm going to tell you, be careful. I keep hearing it. Be careful what you're speaking. Test the spirit by the spirit. Too many people are hurting in this hour. And God wants to do miracles, signs, and wonders because he said, I'm still God of yesterday, today, and forevermore. Oh, come on, somebody. Hallelujah. He said, I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and end. And is there anything too hard for me? He said, I'll do it for you. I'll do it for you. I did it before, before, and I'll do it again. Hallelujah. He said, but in my timing. See, we don't want to wait on nothing no more. He said, but in my timing. Can you wait on me? Can you trust me? Can you not sin while you're waiting? Because it does matter how you wait. Are you complaining? Are you murmuring like the children of Israel? God, I wait on you. God, I trust you. Keep me, Lord. This thing for real. You got to do this for real. And it's going to take some work. The body of Christ have gotten lazy. You don't want to read. Everything is Technology. Sometimes you're gonna have to you're gonna have to get in you're gonna have to dissect a, a it could be one scripture that God wants you to read over and over and over again. Negate anything that has to do with God because God is dimensional. So many people they don't understand the paradigm shift that's happening. You see, because I'm gonna be honest with you, with the body of Christ do just like everybody. Uh, I'm I'm going here. You tell me that God give everybody the same message because I don't understand that. When somebody talk about, that's why I did it on purpose, her paradigm shift. Everybody still talking about paradigm shift. Y'all remember, um, was it David Prince that came with the grace of God? Everybody's talking about grace. God is bigger than that. Don't don't limit him. But you, you can't preach on nothing if you ain't spent time with God. You can't hear nothing if you haven't spent time with God. Let me tell you something. And I'm telling you what God said. God said there's a Saul spirit that's on this earth. Saul wants to do what Saul wants to do. And Saul got his whole family killed. But Jonathan's son. And he was lame and maimed. Y'all, you don't want that kind of legacy. I'm just being real with you. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. But David, after David sinned with Bathsheba, David said, I have learned. It is good that I have been afflicted because I have learned the statutes of God. Hallelujah. You better understand what I just said. Or you can be a Saul or you can be a David. Which one do you prefer? Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. But also, most of the pastors, you came Nebuchadnezzar. You, you about to you about to go through that forest and become an animal, and you will repent. I'm telling you, this is thus said the Lord, and you will come to yourself and know who is God. Hallelujah to His name. That's what thus said the Lord. You guys, I'm telling you, and my heart gets so full. That's how I know it's real and it's coming. God is not pleased with the body of Christ. I'm scared. Oh, I'm scared of God. Y'all can play crazy if you want to. If you don't, if you, I don't know if you read that Bible like I read it. Or better yet, I don't know if you've seen the stuff I've seen God do and allow. You should have. Hello, he do. He does it in front of everybody to let you know. Repent, for the kingdom of God is at hand, he says. Hallelujah. All right, so that's all God gave me today. Day three, woo! I ain't gonna lie. The first, it's, it, 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 it'll make you woo, just keep on pushing don't you dare give up don't you dare and, and and i gotta say this if you feel because this, 
full liquid fast or no fast. I did one. Oh man, I did a four day fast with nothing. I and uh, there was just one time. Ooh. <laughs> so I already know that some of you are going through it. Okay, here's the deal. I want to encourage you. If you feel okay, oh, I, I can't do this. And this, but look, wait a minute, because that's what we done. We didn't make stuff too easy. You know, I can't do it. I can't do it. Try with all your heart to go as long as you can. And if you absolutely cannot revert to a Daniel fast, try liquids from 5 a.m. to 3 p.m. And then after 3, eat you some fruits and vegetables. But I'm saying do not give up. You don't know what God has for you at the other end of this. Every time there's a fast, I see a breakthrough. Every time there's a fast, somebody get a somebody gets saved. Every time there's a fast, don't you understand? In the Bible, every time there was a fast, there was a movement. Hallelujah. There was a blessing. Hallelujah. There was a shift. This ain't just about you. You don't know who God got you praying for. You don't know who God got you standing in the gap for. You don't know who you gird in the spirit. Hallelujah. The body of Christ don't know how to travail for anybody no more. Well for anybody no more. Labor for anybody no more. Ooh, that it is. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Got to do better. I must put myself. We got to do better. It is required. You don't see what's happening. The devil is here. And he ain't going nowhere. And it's going to get worse, God says. I'm sorry. So we got to come up. The women have got to come up. We got to be more powerful. We got to be strong in the Lord. We are a soldier. Come on, somebody. Too many crying and whimping and jelly backs. Boot up. Strengthen yourself. As a matter of fact, this is what God says. He says, gird thyself like a man and a woman. Hallelujah. All right, now, that's it. I, I, you know, and that's another thing. We need to learn to do this too. Everybody. When the spirit stops, you stop. Because we know it's flesh after that. <laughs> I'm just being real. Because if you keep trying to go on and the spirit is stopped, you will say something that's not of God. You will do something that's not of God. Learn to be obedient. Learn to flow with the spirit. And when the spirit cuts it off, you cut it off. It's just like prophesying. Some of y'all end up lying because people want to hear more and more and more. No, when the spirit stops, you stop. Don't start lying. That's even in ministering. I'm just being honest with you guys because you need to hear truth. The, body, the Bible says the truth shall set you free. Ain't nothing else going to set you free. Hallelujah. So God bless you. I love you all. Come on, we can do this. We can do this. We ain't new to this. We true to this. All right, this is Apostle Deanna Dixon. Roll out soldiers, for that is who we are. Let's get it. God bless.